Well, hello everybody. Welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as you may well expect by your friends and mine too at tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look. Well, you saw the title up there, right? We're going to talk about converting a blonde to a brunette or a redhead or gray hair or black hair or a lot of different colors actually. Um, we're going to use a bunch of really cool techniques in Photoshop. Now, if you enjoy this tutorial, of course, subscribe to my channel so you never miss another one of these tutorials in the future. We cover lots of photo related Photoshop stuff, but also lots of great graphic design related Photoshop stuff here at tutvid.com. And if you really enjoy this tutorial, go ahead and buy my course. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop from beauty retouching to retouching plates of food and landscapes and all kinds of other cool stuff. You're really going to like it if you enjoy this tutorial. And speaking of this tutorial, it starts right now. So here's what we're going to do. We have a few different options here. We're going to convert uh, blonde to a bunch of different colors. And we've gone kind of extreme with some of these colors, but, you know, extreme can be cool too. Um, we're, well, here's six different options. We're going to try to basically mimic all of these. And our original image is this right here. We have this girl. She's in her bathrobe or her nightgown or whatever it is, uh, just getting up out of bed. And the key with this image and part of what's actually going to make it kind of difficult is the fact that it is so well lit. There's so much detail up in the hair when it comes to the light hair. Now, when it comes to darker hair, you really do want a lot of detail up there in the dark hair because it makes it very easy to change. Well, not very easy, but it makes it a little easier, I should say, to change to some of the uh, especially lighter colors. In this case, it's going to make things challenging because we have very extreme highlights here in the blonde hair, but then the roots of the hair are kind of dark. So it's going to be a good photo to try to tackle this, uh, this type of effect with. And if we can make it work with this photo, chances are with your photo, you'll be able to make these techniques work as well. So step one, and arguably one of the most important steps, is to get a nice selection of the hair. Now, I do have to make a confession. There were these strands of hair hanging down, and in this case, um, sometimes it's, uh, well, it's not usually all that useful to fight a war of attrition or a really a losing battle, I should say. Uh, but this is to fight a losing battle to try to change and make this very, very difficult selection where it's very fine hair that goes from a light background to fine hair that goes over a dark background. But, oh, it's not just a dark background. It's a dark background that's nearly the same color as the hair. So instead of spending a ton of time to make the perfect selection and mixing channel based selections and and just we're just making it go away. So I went and just hid that stuff and cloned and fixed up the, the bathrobe there. And that's what my little cover up is. So we're, we're going to avoid having to make that difficult selection. But we will still have a selection of hair right there next to her chin and also a little tuft of something sticking out there from the back of her arm. So we begin the selection using the quick selection tool. That guy right there and I'm just going to go ahead and paint over her hair and get you know the best selection that I can now you can see I'm getting an awful selection why is that well number one because sample all layers is not turned on and because I don't even have the proper layer selected in the layers panel that is um, well it's not a good thing I guess is what I'm trying to say let's select the background image and we'll go ahead and make a selection of her hair now this is just a rough selection you can see we're getting some of her face as well I'm not really concerned about that I'm looking to make a rough selection of the hair we'll, we'll start pulling it together here in a moment. There we go. Something sort of like that is cool. All right. Now what I'm going to do is hold my alter option key and cut away the bit of the selection here, which is her nightgown or her robe. And voila, looks good. I'm just watching here, right here along her back. I want to make sure all of that goes away as well. So I'll just paint that away with a quick selection tool. I'm going to expand my selection out here over to this bit of hair hanging out here over her, her robe. There we go. And I'll continue it right up along there. Cool. I think I'm going to try to grab this little piece of hair as well and we'll worry about punching the hole here by the base of her jaw, right between the hair and where her skin is. We'll worry about that in a moment. Uh, and then we need to get rid of, she's got like a Wonder Woman-esque looking mask. We're going to just make sure we, we paint that right away. So we're only selecting the hair. All right, cool. So we've got that. And I'm also, well, up here, I guess we should probably take away the little door post or whatever that is. Uh, we don't want to change the color of that. And you can see it's cut back into her hair, which is no good. Give Photoshop a second to do its thing. And let's just paint this out a little bit just to make sure we get the rest of her hair. We're going to really attack that with the quick selection tool in just a moment here. So I'm not too, too concerned about it. All right, cool. So we've got a basic selection. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the little bit of hair hanging down beside her chin or this stuff down here. We're going to do those in just a moment. Uh, 
Uh, let's focus on getting a good selection here with this. I'm gonna make sure I get rid of any wayward selections up there on the piece of wood. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose Select and Mask, which is gonna bring me into the Select and Mask dialog box, which we all know and love so dearly at this point. Don't worry about this messy looking stuff. These are the, these are the layers of cover up that are covering up that bit of hair. That's why it's appearing so white. Uh, we're concerned about just getting a nice selection of the hair up here. I am going to jump right away to the Refine Edge tool. That's this brush right here. And I'm going to attempt to paint and clean up my edges using this brush. Uh, now, not just this brush, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of edge detection radius uh, action onto this, maybe four or five pixels, and maybe even tick on Smart Radius. And let's see if that helps us. Now, I'm just gonna gently paint over these edges of the hair and let the, the Smart or Refine Radius tool do its work and paint down along there. That should help clean up the front of her hair a little bit. Now, down here is where things get kind of tricky. So we're gonna paint along this bit of the hair. And what I can try to do is come into here and paint away uh, what is skin. And I can see it's 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 attempting to do what would be a, a valiant job if it can do it well. But I have a feeling I'm gonna have to go in there by hand and kind of clean things up. And that's all right, we'll just go in and clean it up. And I'll come around over here, clean this up as best I can. I'm also gonna have to tweak and adjust this by hand. Again, it's gonna be difficult for Select the Mask to pick up the difference between the color of her hair and the very similar color of the gown. Now I'm gonna start with the top of her head because that's just the way I prefer working with this kind of thing. And I'm gonna paint along the top. Now here again, where her hair overlaps that that you know piece of wood that's of similar color, it's also gonna be difficult for Photoshop to kind of make that right. So we're gonna have to go in and tweak that by hand as well. Uh, but I'm gonna try to make sure I get as many of these like little flurry and fly away bits of hair as possible here on the back of her head. That is against kind of a, a what more of a solid blue background I think it was. So that shouldn't be that shouldn't be as difficult for select a mask to pick up. And we'll come into here and just clean up some of this stuff. Right? Great, great, great. Something like that. And yeah, yeah, maybe I'm gonna hold down alter option to paint away some of the effect that's done down there at the bottom of the hair. I really don't like that. And then I'll just clean it up a little bit. All right, cool. So we have kind of our base mask. I think this is gonna be good to work with initially. And I'm gonna choose here to output it to a new layer with layer mask. And I'm gonna choose okay. And you can see we're getting just the hair kind of cut away onto its own layer. Let's turn on the original background layer again, just so everything kind of fills in properly. We have our hair up on its own layer. In fact, I will name this layer hair because that's all we can see. So if we shut the background layer off, we're just seeing the hair, right? So let's turn the background layer back on. And how do we know what needs to be changed with regard to the hair? Well, we need to make a rather drastic adjustment. And let's talk about making like purple or green hair, right? We did see we made a copy of purple and green hair. So let's let's make some more of that. Maybe we'll 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 play around and make it a little different here. We're gonna to choose to add a curves adjustment layer right there, curves adjustment layer. And we wanna clip it to the layer below. So we can use this little icon here at the bottom of the curves adjustment panel to clip it to the layer beneath, there, uh, therefore only affecting the layer beneath. And because the layer beneath is just showing the hair, all that we're gonna change is the hair. And you can see by darkening it right off the bat, we get a little bit of like, a, you know, making it much darker blonde, or we could pump it up, make it more of like a bombshell bleached blonde look. It's a little unrealistic though at that, at that brightness level. Uh, what I wanna do is come over here to green and we're gonna reduce greens. In fact, I can take the little finger scrubby tool and say, look, reduce the greens. And that's gonna make the hair pretty purple. And it's got a little bit too much red in it. So let's go up to red and reduce the reds as well. That's gonna add cyan. And you can see it almost makes the hair look more blue. That's all right, we'll go to the blue channel and we could either add blue by boosting blue or we could remove blue uh, by adding yellow, which gives us kind of this weird green look. I think I wanna add blue. I want this to be a really, really extreme effect, almost like it's you know a cosplay outfit and that's fine. The reason that I need it to be extreme is because it's really gonna show me what these edges look like. And if I can make these edges look somewhat reasonable with a very extreme hairstyle, uh, they're gonna look pretty good when I do a more realistic hairstyle. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking here. That's what I'm playing with. Um, I don't mind this stuff here. I'm gonna grab my brush tool and let's begin cleaning up uh, the front of her face first. So grab the brush tool. Uh, I've got it, it's a huge brush right now. So we're gonna use our uh, square bracket keys, left square bracket to make the brush a little bit smaller. Uh, blend mode of normal, opacity of 100 is probably great. We want black to be our foreground color. So hit the little flippy flop arrows right there. Black is our foreground color. And we're gonna paint away all this blue that's appearing out there first and foremost. We don't want it to appear over her eyes, all right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint and just kind of blend it to her skin here at the front part of her hair. Make my brush a little bit bigger, therefore making the softened edge of the brush a little bit bigger. I'm gonna flip to white and I'm gonna paint over that. You know what, I'm just gonna undo that a couple times and I'm gonna try painting over that again. There we go, something more like that is better. Uh, I probably need to make my brush a little bit smaller. We wanna change the opacity of the brush at this point. I'm gonna reduce it to maybe like 20, 30%. 
something right around 35%. There we go. That's good enough. I'm going to flip my foreground and background color. So I'm painting with white. Letter X does that as well. And I'm just going to paint in right down here. So I'm going to paint some of that blue in. So let's take a quick break from this blue haired nonsense. And as I mentioned in the open of the tutorial, if you're really enjoying what you're seeing here and loving this tutorial and looking for a way to support what we're doing here and allow me to keep making more of these tutorials, hey, pick up a copy of my course. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. If you like this, I think you'll like that. And uh, hey, I'll like it too. And I, it'll just be likes all around. With that like fiasco out of the way, let's jump back into this tutorial right now. And guys, I made a, a pretty stupid mistake here, but you know what? We're going to leave this in the tutorial because real life happens. And when real life happens, you got to adjust. Uh, in fact, the only adjustment we're going to make here is kind of a complete undo. Uh, you can see I'm painting here on the mask for the curves adjustment. The point of adding the curves adjustment is to refine the mask that is applied to the hair layer. So we need to make sure we're working on the hair layer mask. So I'm going to select the mask next to curves adjustment and drag it down to the trash can. Yes, delete that layer mask. Now select the layer mask on the hair layer and let's work on this. That is incidentally why we weren't getting any more blue applied down here. So now if we paint using that 20 pixel brush, boom, the blue just drops right down into there. Hit the letter X to flip foreground and background so we're painting with black. Make the brush big again and let's just paint some of this off of her skin texture on the front of her face. There we go. Let's go ahead and make sure we paint over the blue down here around her eyes, right? We kind of have to redo what we thought we had done before. And it's multiple strokes because we have our brush opacity set to 35%. So just make sure we get that going and get that right. Let's come up here, and just paint that away. Uh, now here are the edges of the hair. You can see it doesn't really look the most realistic. So let's try to just fade that away a little bit, but that really actually kind of makes it look worse. We need to make our brush smaller to get a little bit of a harder edge. That's what, that's what the doctor orders. And uh, we're gonna set our foreground color back to black by hitting the letter X. Just paint away some of the stuff that's kind of extreme in there. All right, now we're coming down to here. You can see like right up there, see we got little bits that are missing. We wanna make sure we're painting with white and we just paint over all of that because all of that, we need that to be solid blue. But down here, we need to paint some of this away. So hit the letter X again to paint with the color black. And we're just gonna paint away uh, some of this extraneous blue that does not look good down here. And we can paint stuff back to, uh, to make sure that it, it kind of fits what we're working with and just keep going back and forth over it until you get the exact look that you're shooting for. Something like that looks not too bad. I'm gonna paint with black again, get rid of some of the extra mess that's there. Uh, I'm gonna paint with black once more. I'm gonna paint down here over her shoulder. And you can see there's a lot of darkness down here. I think I wanna kinda of try to get rid of some of that, uh, but we want the hair still to be affected. So we gotta make our brush much smaller as I've just done and paint away some of the stuff that's like super noticeable because in all likelihood, all that's doing is changing the color of the robe. As long as we're going for realistic hair colors, if we're missing a couple strands of hair here and there, it's probably not gonna be all that noticeable. We can make the brush tool a bit bigger and we can set the opacity of the brush probably a little bit lower even, maybe take it down to 15. I just hit the numbers one and five very quickly and we can just kind of lighten up the amount of color that's going to be dropped in on those shadows all right it's going to help make them look a little bit more realistic something like that i'm going to paint in make sure all that's filled in with color all right down here we're getting you can see the entire shoulder of her uh, robe is covered so we want to make sure we hit x set black as our foreground color again and we want to paint all of this away in fact i'm gonna hit the number five to boost my brush opacity to 50. it's going to help me paint all that away much much faster something just like so Looks good. And down here, you can see an entire chunk of her hair is not even uh, selected. So we wanna make the brush a little smaller, hit the letter X to set white as our foreground color and go in and paint, paint, paint this in. And once more, add a little bit more. Cool, that looks good. All right, these edges all look good. I'll clean that edge up a little bit. If there's anything around here that needs cleaning up, like this right here, we can just go ahead and paint that in, make sure that that's all filled properly. Up here against the wood, this needs to definitely, we need to paint with black. So hit the letter X to set black as our foreground color. We're gonna go through. Gonna just soften that off a little bit and soften this up too. We don't want there to be any like crunchy color streaks at the top of her head. Up there all looks pretty good. All right, and then we're back around to the other side. Now, not a perfect selection, but close. We're gonna use the lasso tool now and I'm gonna select an area like this. And the reason I'm selecting an area like this, whoops, don't wanna do that. Let's undo a couple times here. I just moved the layer up and down a little bit. That's what made it look all weird. I'm gonna zoom in and uh, these edges have, they're a little bit too sharp. We need to blur it a little bit. So we're gonna go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we wanna blur it very, very slightly, maybe like two pixels, if that. Two might even be too much. Let's go with like one. Go ahead and hit okay and command or control D to deselect. I still have this mask selected. So by blurring that layer mask, and not the layer, 
we just end up, you know, fading the edges a little bit. So you want to make sure that you have your layer mask selected, but you should as long as you haven't like, you know, swapped the layers around or anything crazy. Down here could probably also use a little blurring. So I just select it. I just make a quick selection like that, right? I have the mask selected and then just hit Commander Control F. It's just going to add a little blur. Commander Control D to deselect. And maybe over this area out here, see how it kind of looks, it just looks a little chunky. Commander Control F, Commander Control F a couple times. See how it cleans it up, makes it look so much more crisp and clean. Just a very slight blur. Commander Control F and then Commander Control D to deselect. Just cleans it right up really nice let's go right in here commander control f boom commander control d to deselect right down along here all that could use a little blur commander control f commander control d voila right along here same thing commander control f commander control d the 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 trick here is not to blur it too much commander control f commander control d and if an area needs more blurring just hit commander control f two times right commander control f once maybe it needs more commander control f a second time commander control d to deselect there's a little bit of blue sticking out there grab the brush tool we're painting with black make the brush a bit smaller and let's just paint that away, right? Voila, nice and easy. Now down here, this area doesn't look too, too natural. So we're going to just select over that. Commander Control F to blur that just one pixel. Looks good. Now the rest of this, I think, looks pretty solid. We might have to do a little bit of blurring up here by the door, right? Especially where it was kind of rough. And then over here as well. See how that looks like kind of chunky? Watch, we just hit Commander Control F and it just helps fade it all together so perfectly. All right, the rest of that looks pretty good. So we've spent some time getting our selection. I think it's pretty good. We may have to tweak it a little bit depending on the color of hair that we're adding, uh, but we've really made a lot of progress. Now at this point, we can go ahead and select these little bits of hair as well. And there's a number of ways we can select these. Uh, we can use something like the Quick Selection tool and make sure we have the layer selected and just paint over them. And then we can go in with, uh, with Select and Mask and spend even more time cleaning up and getting that selection over in my original image. I did get, uh, I did make sure I got that selection. Uh, so I, I, you know, had, had the mask expanded down to there, but I'm not going to take the time to do it right here and right now. Cause quite frankly, we spent enough time working on this mask as well. Maybe what we'll do if it's really, if it's really, really bothering us, what we can do here, I'll give you a little trick. Well, it's not really so much of a trick as just to go in and get it done kind of thing. We can just use our clone stamp tool very destructively. We're just working on this layer. Let's set sample to current layer and let's just go ahead and clone stamp this away. So I'll just paint away here. But that's not going to work just on that layer because we're only showing the hair. So let's just go ahead and create a layer beneath this. So I'm going to hover over the new layer icon, hold down my Commander Control key, add a layer, and we'll just call this Cover Hair. And now I can just alter option to sample. Well, I need to go current and below at this point because we're working on a blank layer. Yeah, so what what should have been just a quick and easy, quick and easy cover up took a little bit longer because... I wasn't thinking straight. There we go. So we can just, you know, go ahead and cover something up pretty easily just like that. It's not perfect, but you know what? Uh, nothing is. Uh, so there we go. We all, we've got that. Now we also have this little bit of hair here. We can just go in and quite frankly, we can go ahead and paint this by hand. So we can grab the brush tool. We're painting with 50% opacity and we can just go ahead and paint over this just like so. I can go through here really, really quickly. Add this right to our selection as we wish. Something like that is going to work just fine. And I know I'm only painting at 50% opacity, uh, but I think that'll kind of work for what we're going for here. Just as long as we kind of have a nice little selection, it'll just add to the realism. I can flip paint with black and paint away some of my mask down here in the shadow, just like so, just to make sure it's going to blend nicely. So there we go, something like that. And we'll, we'll be attacking the hair that's hanging down behind her chin as well. All right, so let's go ahead. Now that we've spent all that time making this selection, let's talk about actually changing some color. So the first thing is we really don't need the blue curves layer, uh, but we're going to keep it just because we can. And we're going to grab the hair layer. We're going to hold down Alter Option and drag it up above that layer. And we're going to create uh, a new instance of this layer of her with sort of like the good mask, if you will. And we'll shut off the original curve and hair. In fact, I'll just group those together, Commander Control G, and we'll name this, you know, blue hair or something, whatever. Now with this layer, what we can do is, well, let's work on gray or white hair first. This is going to be pretty easy. Apply a black and white adjustment layer, hold down command option G, that'd be control alt G on the PC, and we get a nice head of gray hair. You can further tweak it by tweaking the red slider, right? We can make it a little bit more light or a little darker. Same thing with yellow, lighten it up a little bit or darken it up a little bit, a little bit more light. I don't think that's proper English. Uh, we can brighten or darken here. Uh, this is what happens when you talk so much in one sitting. Uh, all right, so we can do that. You get a nice head of gray hair. Uh, and uh, by the way, just like I said, lightening it up, darkening it, that's how you're going to make that more like gray, or well, it is gray, but make it more like white 
white hair. We could also try setting it to blend mode or something like screen, but you can see that almost gives us like an electric yellow vibe, which is not, not really what I'm going for. So there's gray. Uh, and you know what, actually, I'm going to drag the cover up layer down here. Let's select all of our background stuff and just command or control E. I'm going to merge all that together. I'm also going to go ahead and just delete the folder full of, full of old uh, hair colors just to keep things from getting too confusing here. All right, not too bad. Pretty easy for the gray. Let's group these layers up here. Command or control G and I'll just name this, you know, gray or, or really whatever. Gray is fine. Uh, what we want to do is duplicate that original hair layer once more. So I'm going to open up the gray adjustment layer or uh, layer group, I should say. The adjustment layer is right there, of course. I'm going to hold down my alter option key and drag it up outside of the gray layer. And now we want to talk about black hair. So we're going to add another black and white adjustment layer. Command option G, control alt G to, to, you know, clip that to the layer beneath. And I want to darken the red. So I'm going to set the reds to negative 10, darken up kind of the, the more shadowy bits of the photo. I'm going to darken yellows as well. I'm going to take those to negative 50. So that's really going to darken things a little bit. And then I think I'm going to leave, I might set, you know, I'll just drop the greens a little bit just in case there's a little green in her hair. Let's try pulling the cyans back a little bit. And you know, there's not much in the way of any cyan in the photo. Let's try pulling the blues back. Doesn't look like there's much in the way of blues and magenta is not much in the way of that either. So there we go. We just kind of go with a darker gray base for black. And then we're going to use an exposure adjustment layer. Exposure is a little plus minus here, so we're going to add that. And again, Command Option G, Control Alt G to clip it into place. And uh, we're just going to we're going to change the we're going to tweak the exposure offset and gamma correction here just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to set the exposure to negative 1.3, so negative 1.3. You can see darkening things up a little bit. We're going to offset it uh, plus. I'm going to push it up uh, about zero point. I want to say 1200. So I'm going to do 0.1200 and just, just to give us some nice even numbers to work with here. Uh, and then I'm going to change the gamma correction to about 0. Point, what looks good here? About 0. 0.3. Let's go with 0. 0.3, right? That looks pretty much like a, a very dark black head of hair from what was very light hair. Now, in something in the case of something like this, you may need to go in and further tweak the edges of the mask because, I mean, you can really see. Let's let's not try to hide from this. Those edges look pretty bad with hair that is this dark. So you're going to need to spend more time cleaning up those edges and making them just perfect. Same goes for up here. Uh, but, you know, it, that needs to really be cleaned up all along the front side of her forehead there, right? We could take the We could take that hair mask, grab our brush tool, and just paint all that junk away because that looks bad. It looks like she's bleeding ink or something down the side of her head. Really not a great look. There we go. Something like that is okay. Um, I'm going to zoom back out. We're not going to jump back into the mask. We've spent enough of the tutorial working on the mask, but the mask, as you can see, is so important. If you don't have a good mask, it is not going to be a realistic looking head of hair. So it's really, really important. I hate to have to spend that kind of time on a mask, but hey, duty calls. We're going to name this layer group black. I just went and selected the layers, Commander Control G to group them together. Uh, I'm going to grab that layer, uh, the hair layer, Alter Option, and drag it out. Let's go. Whoops. Well, what am I doing here? Let's let's undo that, Commander Control Z. Let's try to get some mouse control here. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to uh, shut off. I'm going to shut off the black through blue hair layers. Just hide all that stuff. That also actually could have contributed to the edges looking kind of shoddy, at least the outer edges. Uh, all right, so here we are with this hair layer. Let's talk about red or auburn hair. And again, the hair is really light. We're going to kick things off, I think, with the exposure uh, adjustment layer right off the bat. Command Option G, Control Alt G on the PC, select that exposure adjustment layer. And I'm going to change the exposure to a negative, I'm going to go like negative 25. Oh, there's negative 30. That's a little bit too much. I'm going to go up to like negative 25. That's cool. And then over here, I think I'm going to go, mm, I got to push it up a little bit, push those shadows up a little bit, but not too much. I'm like 0 0.0269. You see that? We could round it off to 2 270. I'll just keep things a little more simple. And then for gamma correction, mm, I don't think I'm going to mess with the gamma correction too much. This is going to swing the hair a little bit too much in either direction. I'm going to leave it even at 1.0. And next, what we're going to do is add a curves adjustment. Now, I'm going to be punching in some numbers here in curves, but every head of hair is different. So it's nice to know how curves works. I've got a bunch of tutorials on how it works. Let's hit this little button down here to just clip this adjustment layer. Uh, I've got a bunch of different tutorials on how curves work, so I'm not necessarily going to get into it uh, like crazy here, uh, but let's just go ahead and bump the black point here. I'm going to select the black point. In fact, I'm just going to change the output right off the bat just so we keep things nice and precise. I'm going to change the output to 15. I'm going to select the white point up here, and I'm going to change the out point of this to 235. So we're just pulling down on the highlights a little bit and boosting the shadows a little bit. You can see the hair looks, it kind of looks washed out and faded right now. Uh, so let's 
it's not too super realistic. Let's go down to the green channel here. We're actually not going to touch the red channel in, in a red or auburn head of hair as crazy as that may sound, but hey, let's uh, let's stick with what we're working on. Let's uh, apply a point right to the middle of the curve. It can really be anywhere, and we're going to change the input and output of this. The input's going to be 155, and the output is going to be 110. So that's going to place the point at a very specific point on our uh, curve here. Then we're going to go down to the blue channel, and in the blue channel, once more, we're going to place a point here on this curve and the input is going to be 160 and the output is going to be 90. So you can see we've almost got this like washed out almost like brown yellowish heading in the direction of red hair. I'm going to collapse my properties panel for that curves adjustment. And actually I'm thinking I might need to work on the RGB channel, uh, the RGB curve a little bit more. Let's add a point here and I'm just going to, I'm just going to kind of freehand this. Let's punch this in at an input of 55 and like an output of, I don't know, 50 there. Yeah. So that's going to add a little bit more contrast and help just darken some of those shadows An input and output of 50. It's right down there near the, the shadowy areas of the, uh, of the photo looks good. Next up, we're going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer, command option G, control alt G to clip it to the layers that we're working on. We want to tick on colorize. I'm going to tick on colorize and you can see it's given us like this washed out kind of pink look. It's actually kind of cool looking. But what I want to do is crank the saturation to about 100. Uh, I'm going to leave the lightness at zero and I'm going to shift the hue here to, I don't know, like plus plus 19, 20, something like that. It looks pretty good. Uh, very, very vibrant orange. Uh, and you can see here, this is where we can change the, the actual hue of the hair as well. We can make it more red, more orange. I'm going to go with right around 20, something like that should be good. And now to kind of rein this in, we can add a vibrance adjustment layer, but really now that I think about it, we can just kind of push the saturation back off of this a little bit, right? So let's push the saturation down to about 80, something like that. That's kind of cool. And next up, we're going to add a color balance adjustment layer. We're going to clip this as well. We can use a little icon here down the bottom of the properties panel. I'm going to shrink this up a little bit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to begin with shadows. I want to work with shadows first and I'm going to push some red into it. So plus 10 for shadows. Um, I'm going to not mess with green or magenta and I'm going to push, I think some yellow into the shadows. So I'm going to push down on that. So plus 10 with red minus 10 to push some yellow into it. And let's go to midtones here. Now here with midtones, we're going to take some red out of it. Again, I'm not going to mess with magentas or greens. And here with the blues and yellows, I'm going to push a bit of yellow in. So I'm going to do like negative 40 on the yellows. And you can see the hair is still not looking all that realistic. Now, at any point along the way, of course, you can stop and decide, hey, that's exactly the color of orange. And I'm just trying to throw a lot of techniques at you. But to really finish this off and to get it to something that I think looks decent for this photo, let's change the blend mode here to multiply. And it's going to really darken this. Hey, there's still a little bit too much red in there. So let's come back to the hue saturation adjustment layer and just reduce some of the saturation a bit. You take it down to like negative 55, 56, and you can see it almost looks a little bit too brunette. We're going to reduce the opacity of this color balance layer because that is what's making it so like crazily dark. That's kind of cool. Uh, and maybe at this point, go back to hue saturation and say, you know what? I do want more of that red back in there. Um, in fact, I'll go back to the color balance layer and let's go back to our midtones, right? And I think we're going to push red into this and maybe even a little bit of magenta into it and let that be the red that makes up our red hair. So there's something like that. So there is a nice, very red, very red, albeit, uh, red hair effect that you can apply to your photos here in Photoshop, specifically taking a blonde from being blonde like that to having more of like a very crazy red auburn hair. And if you want it to be darker, just increase the uh, pre increase the good old opacity of that color balance layer uh, and, you know, pull back on the saturation of the hue saturation if you decide there's just too much red in there or make it a little bit more red red by, you know, flushing your hue back toward the red or make it a little bit less red and more orange by pushing it more toward the yellow here on the hue slider. So a lot of options there in terms of making the red or auburn hair. It's just a lot of tweaking and playing with things. And like I said, I, I want to go through it like this because because you're not using the same photo as me. You're probably using a different photo. So therefore, having things set up like this, you can really adjust to apply it to virtually any photo you could ever take of a lighter hair. Commander Control G to group this stuff up. I'm going to call this red for red hair. Actually, I'm going to open that up once more. Alter Option, click and drag to duplicate that hair layer. I'm going to shut the red uh, layer group off. And now we're going to talk about brunette or brown hair. So going from light to dark, going from dark to light, those are pretty difficult. This is what we're going to do now. I don't know if it'll be quite as complex as the red hair uh, because we don't have to worry about getting that, that shade of red in there quite as much. But we're going to kick this off once more with an exposure layer. Uh, I'm going to just go like negative 0.25 right off the 
that. I know I want to darken it. Uh, well, you know what? I also want to clip it to the layer beneath, so I'm just going to hit that little clip, layer clipping icon. I'm going to push the offset up, kind of like I did before, right around plus 0 0.300, whatever, 0 0.269. That's probably good. I'm just looking to kill off a little bit of the contrast there in the shadows like that looks. And once more, I'm not going to mess with the gamma correction. Uh, again, we're going to create a curves adjustment. I'm going to clip it, Command, Option, or Control, Alt, and the letter G. And with the curves layer, we're going to do kind of what we did before, where we just added some points, and I'm going to give you input and output numbers. Uh, but again, this is very specific to this photo, but it kind of keep th keeps things simple. So I'm going to select the black point. I'm just going to change the output to 15, right? looks pretty similar. I'm going to select the white point. I'm going to set the output to 235. This is heading exactly in the direction of our, of our other curves adjustment, right? And I'm going to go up to the green channel. Um, this is, I, I should I should just say, it is going to be the same exact curves adjustment. So we could just duplicate it up. But in case you haven't watched the tutorial until this point and you're just concerned with creating brunette or brown hair, here's how we do it. Green channel, we throw any old point in the middle and we go an input of 155 and an output of 110. There we go. We're going to go to the blue channel. We throw any old point in there. We go for this one of an input of 160 and an output of 90. There we go. You can see we kind of, we're getting a little bit of a brown effect there, aren't we? And also once more back on the RGB layer, we're going to add Add that point where was it right about down here and we're just going to go with the input of 55 output of 50 just to match that because I know we want to do that and now I'm going to collapse the properties panel we're going to add a vibrance adjustment layer and the vibrance adjustment layer I think I'm going to just reduce the vibrance of the hair while well, we want to make sure we clip it so command option or control alt g I'm going to reduce the vibrance I don't know down where this is going to be a sliding scale. As we apply this effect, I'll know exactly where it needs to go. We're going to start with like negative 50 here. You can see we have kind of like a light brunette color. It's actually kind of nice. It sort of fits the photo. Maybe it's a little bit too faded, so we could go back to the curves and adjust it. I don't want to do that quite yet, though, because we're going to apply a gradient map here. And the gradient map has to be kind of specific. We want to apply over here on the black stop. Just double click the black stop right there. And we're going to apply the color FF. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the lighter color. I'm thinking. We want to apply the darker color first. 47.1. B zero A. So it's kind of like a, a very dark brown, but with some saturation. Hit OK. And I'm going to go over here to the white uh, color picker tab. And here I'm going to use that color FFC uh, 379, I believe it was. Yeah, very light, you know, almost like heading in the direction of beige, but not quite light enough to be beige. So you can see it's a very brown gradient map. Hit OK. We want to clip this now to the hair. So Command Option or Control Alt G. Looks pretty bad, but we're going to set this to the blend mode of color to take the color from our gradient map and just mesh it right onto there. You can see it's giving us even more brown hair. And I think what I want to try, because we need to darken this a little bit, let's take the vibrance layer here. And to darken things up, we use a multiply adjustment layer. And look at what that does. Isn't that just incredible? That's pretty cool. We can just reduce the opacity of this vibrance layer as well if we want to lighten the hair a little bit. So we could take it back to like 55% opacity, get a nice dark brown hair. Maybe actually I'll push it back up to like 75, 80. There we go. A really nice dark brunette hair. And it's just these couple adjustment layers. There's exposure, curves, which is, by the way, the same exact curves as our red or auburn hair, uh, a vibrance adjustment layer, really killing off vibrance, but we're also setting it to the blend mode of multiply to give us a nice punch of darkness, and then a nice colorizing gradient map layer set to the blend mode of color, which it's a really subtle effect that it's doing, but it's definitely giving us a really nice color in the highlights of her hair. You could really, I mean, if you really don't like it, you could shut it off, I suppose, and you could rock that as well. That's actually not too bad, but I kind of like it with the gradient map here. So guys, that's pretty much it. We've gone ahead we've converted the blonde to a bunch of different hair colors it's kind of complex it is it's a little tricky but it's all about finding the right adjustment layers and finessing things just right to get that hair to swap from that lighter blonde color to kind of really any color that you would ever uh, desire. I'm actually, I'm still kind of shocked that the red or auburn was so finicky and so much kind of a pain in the neck, uh, but we got it done. So, uh, oh, by the way, if you are if you haven't followed me on Instagram, make sure you follow me on Instagram. My handle is at Tutvid, that's T-U-T-V-I-D. I'm always posting different stuff over there and there's gonna be a lot more like straight up with the camera phone, kind of behind the scenes photos taken when I move into the new space. Uh, so you can really check out some of the behind the scenes and I hope you guys love it and dig it and all that good stuff. So for creating or converting blonde hair to darn near any color under the sun using curves and exposure adjustment layers, vibrance, gradient maps, you name it, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.